force is strong in my family. Force is strong in my family. My father has it. My father has it. I have it. I have it. My sister has it. My sister has it. You have that power too. You have that power too. In time, you'll learn to use it as I have. We would be honored if you would join us. It's episode number 28 of the My Nerd World Star Wars Podcast. I am your host, John Justice. Uh, So glad that you are uh, with the uh, show again uh, this week as we are uh, now, what, less than three weeks, three and a half weeks away from... Star Wars The Force Awakens hitting uh, movie theaters. I'm on my own personal journey to The Force Awakens. We'll talk about that a little bit uh, a little bit later on in the show. Got a lot of ground to cover in this week's uh, podcast. We have uh, new spots that have been coming out. It seems like we're getting you know one or two a week now just consistently. And it's not like they're showing us a whole heck of a lot more. You know, these are sort of 30-second spots that seem to be combinations of things we've seen before and extensions of the scenes that we're most used used to seeing. We're, we're not getting a lot of new footage. It seems like we're being shown, again, just very specific parts of the film, and we are making sure to, or they're making sure to, keep those other parts of the film um, hidden from, you know, from from us. So, you know, we have the scenes on Jakku of them escaping in the Millennium Falcon. We have um, some scenes from uh, Dakar. We now have a name for the planet that I think a lot of people thought was was Yavin. We now know it's Dakar, and there's some complaints over that. We'll get to that. Um, and then some further extensions of what looks to be one of the final battle scenes over uh, over Starkiller Base. So we'll run through a couple of these spots. Not too extensively, just because we have a lot of ground to cover on the podcast today. There's a couple of points I want to make on uh, a couple of these new spots that have come out this week. George Lucas has been very vocal in the media this week. We'll talk a little bit about that and you know, dive into a little bit of what George must be going through. Now, a lot of commentary on the other podcasts this week about George's comments in these interviews. And I think in some ways, George is correct in some of his assessments. And I think in other ways, George is coming off as kind of bitter. And all of it, to me, points to the fact that it's pretty clear that George needed to give up um, Star Wars and the Star Wars universe and give it to somebody else. On my own personal journey to The Force Awakens, I'm working through the movies leading up to uh, the day before The Force Awakens, uh, the Force Awakens open the, uh, opens up. I'll be watching Return of the Jedi. So uh, this weekend, it was Attack of the Clones. I watched it over the course of the, of the uh, past two nights. I want to talk a little bit about the movie and how it kind of relates to what George was talking about and him coming across as a little bit, I don't want to say bitter, but disappointed uh, that it, it seems as if they didn't use his ideas for this sequel trilogy. And personally, I think it's a good thing. And this is coming from somebody who's a fan of the prequels. Uh, there were some book spoilers. I'll tell you where they are, but I'm not going to get into them specifically just because they are very spoiler heavy. And while I've been doing spoilers on the show, um, I, I, you know, I kind of thought, well, I don't want to go that far. I don't want to go so far as to, to explain some of these plot points. But I will tell you where you can go and, and find these particular items. And then we'll talk briefly at the end of the podcast um, about Adam Driver and his comments about Kylo Ren, which plays into something that I had been speculating all along um, when it comes to the First Order, when it comes to the motivations of Kylo Ren, and again, 
just another aspect of this of this new movie that has me really, really excited. So uh, let's get right into it. And first off, we'll start off with the spot that came out earlier this week. This is a uh, thirty second character TV spot for Finn, which has a lot of us, and I say us, I just mean in the fan community and places like Reddit and whatnot, has a lot of us thinking that we're going to get more character-specific um, TV spots. Because this one obviously was devoted specifically to Finn. It shows a little bit of humor that we hadn't seen in any of the spots yet. The more and more footage we seem to get, the more and more we're beginning to get that Star Wars vibe. There was another spot that came out. Uh, well, it started playing on TV a couple of days ago, and finally a better version of it was released, and so I have the audio of that. It, it, this other spot is one of my favorites just because it shows um, it shows more of, a, of, a, of an X-Wing battle scene of the Resistance fighters going off to battle, and it shows uh, Nine Nub, and uh, in, in the cockpit, and Poe Dameron sort of, you know, calling out to, to the other pilots as they have in other movies. Okay, so let's start off with Finn first. And there's a couple of different points I want to make of this, but here's the audio. I won't go through in detail shot by shot, but you hear quite a bit of, quite a bit of, uh, of dialogue from Finn himself. And it really does give you a better idea of what we can expect from this character. And Finn was somebody I was interested in, not as much as I am Ray, until this spot. This spot net has me now just as excited for Finn as I am for Ray. So here you go. You don't know a thing about me. What I've seen. We all need to run. Hope is not lost today. You must face them. Fight them. You sure you're up for this? The Force Awakens. Now, the delivery there, there's a, there is a, a moment, which I assume is Han Solo with Chewbacca and Finn on Starkiller Base. And Han looks at Finn and says, are you ready for this? Are you up for this? And Finn just has this panicked look on his face and just says, a hell no. And it's funny because the fan community zeroed in on him saying hell and, you know, is this the first time that we've had language in a Star Wars movie? That's what the fan community sounds like. I don't know if you realize that. When I read comments from the fan community, that's what they sound like in my head. Do we know a little bit like George Lucas? Uh, and, of course, it's been used before. Uh, the, the, the line actually carries more weight and actually call, uh, calls things into, into question more when Han Solo used it in Empire Strikes Back and made the comment... Um, when he goes out looking for Luke on Hoth, you know, your Tauntaun will freeze before you reach the first marker. Then I'll see you in hell. Ha! You know, right? That, to me, always stuck out because, well, how does hell relate to the Star Wars universe? And I actually, in the wake of people commenting on Finn saying hell in that spot, damn's been said, too, in terms of curse, curse words in Star Wars, uh, somebody actually wrote online an explanation as to how hell fits into the into the star wars universe so that was pretty interesting uh you know that doesn't bother me just as a side point the the use of hell and i'll see you in hell you know it to me it's more of a a nod to the audience in keeping with something that you can relate to in real world terms you know, a long time ago in a galaxy far, far away, they could have a concept of hell, I suppose. We forget that the Force in and of itself, especially during the original trilogy and now the sequel trilogy we're beginning to find out, wasn't as widely held of a religious um view or knowledge as it was obviously in the prequel trilogy you know we've heard stories the force a jedi it's all true you know hokey weapons and ancient religions are no match for a good blaster at your side so the fact that they would use hell um doesn't surprise me too much the one that bothers me more is actually uh panaka in the phantom menace when he says we'll be sitting ducks that's the one that always to me stuck out of my head because i went there are ducks in star wars have I, although it's funny, 
in prior to that scene in the Phantom Menace, when the bongo comes up out of the water after uh, they they go and visit the Gungans in Gungan City, right? Uh, when they pop up on the water, these birds fly away that oddly look like ducks. So, you know, be that it look, you know, I, I'm an apologist. I'll make excuses for her. But that, but but sitting ducks bugs me more than than hell. Um, before we get to the next spot <laughs> and George Lucas, I do want to point some one other thing out. I didn't pull the audio up because the quality wasn't all that great. But um, the Disney Channel has been showing quite a bit of new footage as well. And again, mostly just extensions or quick shots from scenes that we're already aware of. I still firmly believe that we are being kept hidden from a lot of different aspects of this movie. I mean, we really have yet to see anything comprehensive in terms of a space battle, and I'm pretty sure, based off of the spoilers that I read, that there's some pretty large space elements to this movie, even though we haven't seen a lot of it. Haven't seen much on any of the Star Destroyers, haven't seen much of Starkiller Base apart from the... Um, the the battle taking place over Star Killer Base and a quick shot that we saw in this particular trailer here. Um, so I still think that we're being the the marketing of this film has still you know they made a comment that it was only the first you know a third of the movie or whatever. Um, I think you're seeing a little bit of the end, but they're they're leaving out huge chunks. They've marketed this movie by allowing us to see most of the. What to expect on Jakku, even though a lot more happens. We know um, some, uh, uh, quite a bit of what happens at, as, at Maz Kanata's castle. We've seen that in the trailers. Um, a smidget aboard the Star Destroyer, and then just a smidget on Starkiller Base. But apart from that, we haven't seen a big other chunk of the movie. Now, <clears throat> this being said, there was a story that came out yesterday... Um, and somebody was, I don't think, I think it was, it might have been Yahoo News, had said that we've only seen 5% of the marketing for this movie that Disney plans on doing. And it was a, it was a quote from, a, from an unverified source. And they extrapolated that to mean that we've only seen 5% of the amount of, uh, the, of the amount of, of advertising that Disney plans on doing, which means that we still have 95 more percent in the next three weeks that Disney plans to market this film, which seems kind of outrageous, right? I mean, Star Wars is everywhere right now. I mean, we're right now in the middle of where I thought we'd always be, where you really can't turn a corner or turn on the TV without seeing Star Wars somewhere. Now, that being said, there's, there has always been a lot of talk going into Thanksgiving that we were going to see a lot more marketing take place over the Thanksgiving holiday. So if they mean in terms of rotation of TV spots and that they're going to hammer television with these TV spots over again, so we've only seen 5% of what they plan on airing. Maybe not necessarily new footage, but just footage that we've been seeing already with these spots that as fans we've been watching over and over again then I could see the possibility that that might be true. I can't help but wonder if the person who heard the quote, if is if it is indeed correct, wasn't meaning the marketing, was meaning they only have marketed 5% of the movie. Meaning we've only seen 5% of this movie. That, to me, makes more sense. When you think about the amount of footage and now we maybe have five minutes, maybe combined, if you took all the individual shots out, removed the duplicate shots in all the trailers and TV spots, you maybe can come up with five minutes. That, to me, seems a lot more likely that they've only marketed 5% of the movie in keeping with the secrecy. Now, one thing about a TV spot, and then we'll get to to, uh, to some more of this audio and what George Lucas had to say. Um, there's one thing that's bugging me, and maybe there's a fan answer out there that I'm not aware of, and maybe I need to go digging a little bit further. I'm sure somebody talks about it online. If you want to email me, I'd love to hear your your thoughts on this. Uh, justice and the numbers 1041 at gmail.com. But Ray and Finn get in the Millennium Falcon. We've seen in the TV spot, they run up to this ship that's got four big engines on it. 
And as they run up to it, it gets blasted all to hell. <laughs>